Hello everybody, this is Dave Anderson from Exact Engineering and this is a short video of some measurements I have taken uh, looking at the total indicator runout of a gauge pin when held in an ER collet holder and also a end mill holder. Now these are Cat 40 end mill holders and ER holders and um, this was prompted by some work John Saunders had done at NYC CNC. Uh, I thought I'd check what I have in, in house and see how my measurements compare to his. Here you can see I'm uh, measuring the uh, run out of the spindle down by the nose of the spindle itself and it looks like we're getting upwards of zero run out. You can see we are actually contacting. I was bumping the indicator so you could actually see that it is contacting. And then the next thing we want to do is put the indicator up inside the spindle and measure the taper further up in. What this is going to do, this is going to check the axis of that taper to see if it's coaxial with the spindle bearings. And if they're running out, then all bets are off. We're never going to have a, a, true, um, a true running tool. So you can see we're getting very little motion, if any at all. Uh, it's probably within the limits of the actual indicator. Now here's a 3 8 inch uh, end mill holder. This is a Pioneer holder and you can see it's running out about two tenths. Uh, the video wasn't very good quality and uh, anyhow so but it was about it was about two to three tenths and now I'm putting in a 3 8 inch gauge pin. I'm just gonna cinch it down. Now this gauge pin I had measured very accurately and it showed no signs of being undersized even though it is a ZZ gauge pin a minus and it showed no signs of taper. I actually ran it under a test indicator on a surface plate and um, against a gauge block checking for size and also any taper and it was pretty much right on. I am uh, got the indicator set up on the gauge pin up close to the nose of the uh, end mill holder and we're getting four tenths right here and as it runs for a little bit we see it creep up to about five tenths. Uh, not sure, quite sure why that is um, but maybe uh, the temperature is changing in the room, who knows. Uh, anyways, so we get about four and a half tenths, almost five tenths right there. And then what we're going to do is going to travel down the length of that gauge pin and look at the run out down at the end and see if it gets better or worse. As you can see, it's getting better and it almost goes to zero. What that tells me is that point right there, the axis of that gauge pin is tilted with respect to the axis of the spindle and it's kind of crossing right at that point where there's no run out. That's a similar run out we had at the spindle itself. Again here it is down low and uh, it's interesting that, that it actually gets better but what that tells me is uh, the end mill could be tilted or I'm sorry the gauge pin is tilted a little bit. Why is that? There could be taper in the end mill holder which I didn't measure didn't really have a good way to reach way up inside there and grab a, um, a run out measurement because uh, I don't have a stylus very long on my test indicator. Although I could have done it um, a little further up but it probably wouldn't uh, give me a good representation. I really, you really need good separation distance to get a true measurement. So now we're, at, now we're looking four tenths still. So yeah, it's sweeping at four tenths. All right, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to put it in an ER collet holder. And here you can see we've got it chucked up into an ER collet holder and we're going to go ahead and start the machine uh, slow RPM and look at the run out up high. Now I would expect the ER to be better and as you can see it's pretty good. We're getting about one width of the needle movement and honestly this test indicator isn't accurate enough to really tell us what's going on. We just know it's less than one tenth or a fraction of a fraction of it, one ten thousandth of an inch at least. And then we're going to travel down and see what happens. And sure enough, uh, we, it's not, you know, again, it's not perfectly coaxial. We're getting about two ten thousandths run out down further. Which is pretty amazing if you consider all the interfaces uh, that we went through to get this pin to where it is. 
and that the run out is only a couple ten thousandths of an inch. Now the majority of the end mill, uh, majority of the holders I use in both of my machines are uh, the ER style holders in the 16, 25, and 32 versions. I just find them a much more versatile uh, than the um, end mill holders, which can only clamp that specific size. If it's a 3 8 you can only clamp a 3 8 uh, But the other reason too is that um, the end mills, the carbide end mills I've been buying, and I primarily just buy carbide only, those are coming in without the welding flat on them, or the majority of them. And uh, it's pretty annoying to have to take an end mill and grind a flat on it just so I can put it in an end mill holder. That being said, though, um, you know, it might be worth it to uh, buy end mill holders that, uh, that are dedicated for end mills only, and then that'll free up my, my ER holders for other things, such as, you know, drills and, and what have you. Anyway, those are my findings. Uh, please comment below and let me your thoughts. And thanks for watching.